Welcome, movie fans, to a brand new episode of Hollow Victories, where we watch the movies no one wants to recall. I'm Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my robo-co-host. Hello, my name is Neil Watts, but you can call me Mackle. You're, you're cool if you get that one. I get that one. That yeah. must mean I'm cool. Yeah, put sunglasses on your our, profi- our characters for this episode. We're cool. Well, you, you've already asked me to throw in a bunch of lint <laughs> for this episode. You can ignore every I request should... I get. <laughs> I don't. We we got like the lights rotating. I should like add lint flare to like a few of the lights. <laughs> Today we are talking about two remakes from around the same time, both remakes of films from the same director. One, Mister Paul Verhoeven. Or Verhoeven. Depends on how you want to pronounce it. I believe it's pronounced Verhoeven. That's how I have heard it pronounced the most. But occasionally you will hear Verhoeven. I prefer to call um, him Mr. Poovin. Uh, it's, it's, it's his two, in my opinion, his two best films. Robocop and Total Recall, which of course got remade in the 2010s. So today's matchup is Robocop 2014 versus Total Recall 2012. And, uh, if uh, you're ready to just uh, get right into it, let's talk about RoboCop 2014, huh? Yeah, let's just jump into it. So, uh, RoboCop 2014 is, of course, a remake of the Verhoeven classic. This adaptation of the film sees OCP as sort of a, a distributor of military gear. They build robots for the military, right? They, they've they got a bunch of robo-soldiers over policing the Middle East, and they really, really want their robo-police on patrol here in the States, too. Currently, there's a law in place keeping that illegal, so to sort of generate positive publicity for themselves, uh, they develop a program where they make like a half man half robot and uh, the person they pick is of course alex murphy a cop who's killed in the line of duty trying to expose some corrupt cops and and take down this uh, local crime lord alex initially takes fairly well to it although some of the people involved with, with ocp really don't like it uh, a, a lot of people involved with OCP kind of don't like the human side to RoboCop and are trying to, like, downplay that as much as possible. Because really what they want is, you know, they're robot security guys that they got in the Middle East patrolling the streets. And they're just trying to generate good publicity for, for getting those robots on the streets. Uh, usually I'll, I ask what you think here but uh i i, I want to start with my thoughts just like after after we watched both of these movies i said to you like I, I hadn't seen either of these before but i think this was a good matchup because these are both remakes where like there's not a lot wrong with the adaptation but my biggest issue with both of these is just they're boring they're so boring i feel like with both of them uh, at a first glance, there's nothing that wrong with them, but I think the devil's in the details. Like, I think it's something where if you, like, really sat down and, ana- and did an analysis of both of them, you could find out why one is working, why another one isn't working. And at that point, it would be note after note after note. Because, yeah, as a whole, not a terrible movie. It's not blatant what doesn't work about it, but the entire time you're watching it, you know something isn't working about it. It's just missing so well, much. It's so bland where the first one wasn't. Even though they both yeah, kind of have the same idea. It's just boring. There's so many scenes of characters just talking and talking and talking. And it's not like there's nothing that works about it. There is plenty about this film that works, actually. It just, like, as a product, it's it's so much less than the sum of its parts in general, I think. Yeah. No, in terms of, like good ideas that are, ex- like, exclusive to this movie. Uh, there's one that you mentioned at the beginning of the movie when we were watching that I'll let you go into. Uh, one that I noted that was like, okay, this is okay, was they kind of have, like, a Fox News parody. You can say it's another news station. I'm saying it's Fox News. 
with Samuel Jackson. I I think it's just sort of criticism of the media in general, but I, I think Fox News is like the most obvious target when you're talking about that type of thing. Yeah, like with certain family members, I've seen a lot of Fox News. And, I, and I've seen a lot of CNN, too, with other family members. And I'd say out of the vibes I get from it, it really feels like a Fox News to me, like, more so than anything. And Samuel Jackson is not a bad pick for a Fox News anchor. Uh, or some guy, not even a Fox News anchor necessarily, someone who has a show, has their own show on Fox that airs at, like, 2 a.m. in the morning. He's pretty good for that. Uh, I was surprised by it, because I saw Samuel Jackson, I'm like, oh, what do you do? Uh, Samuel Jackson's another one where he shows up in so much good shit, but he also picks a lot of really bad roles. That's just, but to be fair, that's because he's in everything. He shows up all the time. Yeah, no, time. Sam Jackson's in, like, everything. I was looking at, like, the actors I have seen in the most films. I think number one is Nicolas Cage, but very close is Sam Jackson, because he's just in fucking everything. Right. And, like, Sam Jackson is, like, um... Oh, it's not even a movie that I like that much, but Ted 2 had a line that made me laugh, where it was, like, uh, someone's asking, like, there's this girl that, like, they replaced me Lacunas with a different girl, I think it's Amanda Seyfried, Seyfried, how do you say her name? Uh, but anyway, yeah. she, she doesn't know who Samuel Jackson is, and, and they're like, say, you ever see any movie ever? He's the black guy. And it's like, that's so, that's so fucking accurate, though, he's in so much fucking shit. If you've ever seen... If you've seen at least three movies, you've seen one that Samuel Jackson showed up in. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was like kind of a new idea in this movie that worked. Um, even visually, they like kind of created a like interested enough location to where it's not just news anchors standing behind a desk. There were some things that you mentioned that this movie did better. Like, not even better, just this movie had some new ideas that you liked, and I, I, I think you should talk about those. Uh, I, I think, like, in the original RoboCop, you have, like, the the funny little commercial inserts, and I love those commercials, man. And I, I think, like, do, doing a, a media parody like that, like, you could have done that in the 80s, but I do feel like it's, it's, like, much more relevant in 2012 when this movie comes out. Like, Fox News is much more of, like, a thing in 2012, you know? Mm-hmm. So it does feel like maybe, like, an update on that same sort of, like, uh, uh, com like the commercials from the original. I did think that was one of the best parts of the movie. Like, it's an interesting set. Sam Jackson is giving, like, one of the best performances of the film. And it's, it's sort of commentary we didn't really get in the first one. It's, it's commentary on, like... The media, you know, uh, manufacturing consent, you know, right. But uh, so, so yeah, that is that is like a nice addition. There are nice additions to this film that like like, like things in, that are in this film that are not in the original that I I liked. It does it does go like sort of a different direction than the the original film in a lot of places, and I do appreciate that. I think it's cool that we get to see, like, the innards of RoboCop. That we get to see, like, wh what is actually left of Alex Murphy. Yeah. Which is not something we got in the original film. Right. I, I also, you know, they do, they do, like, criticism of American foreign policy in this. Mm hmm And, uh, it's, it's... It's like everyone was doing that around this time. That's not like something super original, but you know, it's it's interesting that they did it at least. Like that is like a way to update this, I guess. Right. Let me put it this way. I I think this movie's right in the middle of Hollow Victory. It's like maybe not literally right on the middle of the list, but it's like it's somewhere in the middle cuz it's like it's very inoffensive. It's well, it's for the most part well made. I, I can't really complain about the visuals too much. I, I think visually it's biggest problem. We'll get into this in just a second. Uh, Cause I'm sure you have something to say about this is PG 13 really. But um, like that hurts the vision that, that like takes away. Not that gore is the only thing that Robocop and at the same time, total recall has going for it. They're both PG 13, these remakes, but it, you do remove personality by doing that. And it's not just like, oh, this movie has more blood than the other. No, both RoboCop and Total Recall have some really disturbing imagery, but it's very creative and practical imagery. 
that you can appreciate the movie for and what these two movies do if it is just so fucking lame. But, but bottom line, I, I'm getting off topic because there is a lot to say about, but despite how boring these movies are, there is a lot to talk about because of what they're based off of. Here's how I'll put it. It's right in the middle of the list, but I won't go as far as to say I'd rather watch Last Airbender or Joysticks again, but I would sooner watch uh, Dragon Ball Evolution before I watched this again. Like, it's like it's better, but it's so fucking boring. How the fuck was Total Recall PG-13? There were tits in this movie. There were three. Three whole tits. It was eight crazy nights, uncensored. Yeah, I mean, like... Maybe it's not exactly halfway through the list, but you, you like you, you think about the stuff we usually do, and there's the really good stuff, and there's the really bad stuff, and this is like the exact midpoint between those two things. Yeah, it is. Th- like e- even some of like the the more painful, like the, some of the worst movies we've watched. It's like yeah, I might rather watch that because at least it's like fucking something, man. I think that the only two movies I would rather not rewatch is Joysticks and that Airbender because those two actually hurt me. Um, I, I think I'd watch Re- RoboCop and Total Recall before those two again, but I think anything else I would rather watch than these two because that that those t- like I th- th- these two really bored me. I would definitely rather wa- rewatch these two than like Aragon and Percy Jackson. <laughs> I, I would I would watch Percy Jackson again way before Percy Jackson was like dumb fun i i i for the most part didn't like it but i, I kind of had fun chuckling at it and there was a couple of ideas that were a little bit creative but i'm sure those were ideas that were taken from the good version of it you know but per- percy jackson's one of those that I, I didn't mind percy jackson that much aragon bored the shit out of me but at least it's been a while I, i'll watch that again before i watch one of these two i'm sure i'm i i think i even have these two ranked higher than that but it's just like so fucking bo- it's just, like i said it's just boring like it, it it's like i'm gonna if i ever have to watch these two again the reason i'm saying that i'd rather watch the other ones is because i'm not gonna pay attention to them a second time <laughs> i'm gonna pull my phone out and do something i'm not watching these two again i have no reason to i don't know there's an i i, I guess i'll give them this they both have like an idea that the original didn't have that i don't hate and for this one yeah it's samuel jackson's fox news segments they he got into the he got into the mindset well. It wasn't just that they were making fun of Fox News. It was that he actually got the personality down pretty well. Because like his pauses and his like, there's this like shame inside to it. And this is not something that only Fox is guilty of. This is something that absolutely all the other networks are guilty of. Where it's like not only and you're not just stupid if you disagree with me. You're a bad person. <laughs> you're like part of the problem. You know, it's like it, it, it's just. <laughs> I think they did it really well. I think that he, like, mimicked the personality of a lot of people who are in, like, the media really well. While still sounding like Samuel Jackson, but he, he's a good pick for that role. I didn't know he would be a good pick for that role until I saw it. No, he he fits. I should stop talking about that because I'm just going to keep repeating myself. But that's, like, the only notable thing about this movie for me. The rest of it was just, like, it's not the worst. It's boring. It feels like it was written by people who, like enjoyed and cared about the original RoboCop True. and were trying their best to write like an interesting remake of it and then they just handed it off to like the most boring director on planet earth and it's like yeah just make the most make a completely generic action movie Right, this looks like every other action movie that was coming out around the same time and I mean you bring up the PG-13 thing and like Okay, sure, less bloodshed is gonna affect it, but, like, there's a way action movies in the 2010s, uh, the way PG-13 action movies in the 2010s edited action that was just, did not look good. Yeah. Right, like, like, we are talking about two very stylish movies from, like, one of the greatest action directors of his time, and you've made them into 2010s action movies directed by whoever you happen to be able to hire, right? Can I I actually say something about this director? That's kind of interesting. Sure. I'm not going to defend him, because I, 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 the only thing I'll defend him for is he directed two episodes of Narcos. That's a good show. Um, That's a good show. The one thing I'll give him with RoboCop that maybe affected it, but maybe it didn't. Maybe this is just, like, a product of the studio and there's nothing else to it. 
it was the first English movie he directed. So I wonder if that played any role in this. Because that's like, uh, that, you know, that's that's touching new ground. You know, you're leaving yeah. you're leaving your comfort zone. You're, you're branching out into something different. Uh, Narco, Narcos is a good show. He If he directed two episodes of that, uh, he did a good job with that. Because Narcos is a really solid TV show. Okay, no, uh, RoboCop was not Verhoeven's first English film. Although it was, it was one of his first English films. It's, it's like, a lot of it's down to the visual style. It's just not an interesting visual style at all. They don't really do anything interesting with it. I also feel like, like, I'll give the movie credit. It understands RoboCop, which is more than I can say for a lot of RoboCop spinoff media. It at least understands the original movie, but it's so much more obvious with what it's doing it, it almost feels like they are like they're turning to the camera and going like hey we get robocop we understand what's going on we 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 get the original film we're not clueless here we do understand it and it's like yeah okay but it <laughs> but what like it's not they don't they don't, like, hit you over the head with it or anything, but it's so much more blunt in this movie than it is in the original, you know? Yeah, they, they are acknowledging it, but it's like the idea of them acknowledging it, but they're like, they won't, like, they're over-explaining themselves almost, is the way, with the way you put it, where it's like, no, we like Robocop, and you know, like they, 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 like, go on about it for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah, no, you got, like... You got, like, a, a Gary Oldman's character in there who's like, oh, maybe this is, like, th this is kind of, like, a morally dubious thing to do. Like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. It's kind of fucked up that we're doing this, isn't it? And, like, the original movie didn't have that. No one had any moral concerns about creating RoboCop in the original. Yeah. And I think that's so much more profound. Like, everyone was just immediately on board with RoboCop in the original. Yeah, and you know what, Gary Oldman char Car Gary Oldman's character, to give him some credit, I think he's playing the role well enough, you know, with what he's given. But I agree with you oh, completely. Yeah. He that, that character doesn't necessarily need to exist. It's something different. So I guess you could say, like, oh, it's a remake, so it should do something different. But it's like, you can make something different while still understanding the original. And I mean, again, and they do understand the original intent, but subtlety... Yeah, or at no, least a it, he's a substitute for subtlety because the original. You mentioned this too. The original is not that subtle, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like this is, like this is like the pure embodiment. This this is a character who is literally there to explain the themes and ideas of RoboCop to us. Yeah, like, God, we'll have to talk about casting, but like, um. I think in both of these movies, like the main characters, like the like the stars of the film, they're like none of them are bad, but they're also bored. And I feel bad to say that about some of these people because I love Colin Farrell, but I you know just saw Banshees of Inisherin last year, and I think he that was like his best. I, I've already liked him before that, but I think that was his best role. He's a fantastic actor. He's so dull in that movie, but I, I can't really like tell him how to fix it. It's just a dully written character. I feel like um, RoboCop and. Uh, Total Recall both have a cast member that, like, they're trying their best and they manage to get a little bit of personality out, but it's still a shitty script. Like, I think RoboCop has Michael Keaton for that, and I think that Total Recall has Brian Cranston for that. I, they could work. They could fit in those roles so well, but it's just not written the same way. It's just not written in a engaging way, you know? Yeah. It's written correctly, but not in an interesting way. Like, it's like, it gets... The point. It gets the point of both of those characters. But it executes it with no personality whatsoever. I think I think both of the characters you mentioned... Bo I think both of those characters like are, are based on characters Ronnie Cox played in the original. Yeah, I think you're Michael right, Keaton actually. Ronnie Cox is actually in RoboCop 2014. Which was a nice detail, but... Oh, is he? Yeah, I don't know if he was in Total Recall, but he was in RoboCop for a, a, a minor role. Yeah, I mean, that that checks out. Like, he's he is the type of guy you'd want to give, like, a minor role in the remake to. Yeah. One idea in this that they, they had that I kind of liked is them actually, like, showing 
Because in, in the original movie, right, you've got Murphy, and then when he shows up as RoboCop, he is all the way RoboCop. Murphy is gone. It's, it's, it's just RoboCop now. And, you know, slowly he has to find, like, his humanity. In this one, they sort of... Because he is supposed to be Murphy when he comes back as RoboCop. That's, like, part of their whole deal in making him RoboCop. I, I did kind of like that they showed the process of making him less and less Murphy over time. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like there's yeah. a specific point where, where, like, they're they're like uploading all this stuff into him, and it's like, oh, he can't handle it, and it's like, well, like, pull Murphy like all the way out of it. I actually thought that was an okay scene. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that's like an interesting idea that they actually like, kind of executed well. It, it it was executed well in the moment, but it's just not executed well throughout. Like nothing interesting really comes up with it again. He's just like that for the rest of the movie now. I, yeah. No. I get it. It's, it's just... I mean, it's like I said, it seems like this was written by people who wanted to make an interesting RoboCop movie, and then they just didn't make an interesting RoboCop movie out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I don't, I, yeah, like, I guess at the end of the day, I don't, like, you know, we've, we've said it before, I don't hate the movie, at least. You, you, you know, like, you can make a remake, in terms of making a remake of something, an adaptation of something, you can be capable of making something that people absolutely despise with every fiber of their being, or you could just make something that's like, eh, it wasn't that great, but, eh. I guess, that, I guess that's better than making the movie that people despise. If it's a property that you care about, I would feel really shitty if I made, like, a last airbender, you know? If it was, like, yeah. if, say if I had to, like, adapt something that I love. Like, say I have to make a Breaking Bad movie or something like that. And then I made something that was received the same way Last Airbender was received. That would be fucking heartbreaking. <laughs> with, with Robocop, it would be like, eh, whatever, I tried. Yeah, I mean, like, the, you, you could certainly do worse adaptations. I think, I think Robocop 2014 has its defenders, even. And I don't... Like, I kind of get where they're coming from, honestly. I don't agree, but I, I I get it. There's someone I worked with who defended a lot of movies that, like, people shat on, and I think RoboCop 2014 was one of them. He also defended Indiana Jones 4. Um, so, you know. But well, yeah. <laughs> but again, I'd rather watch Indiana Jones 4 before this, just because it's, like, kind of funny where they fuck up in some I, areas. Y yeah, honestly, I might prefer watching Crystal Skull to this. Even though, honestly, like, I think this does RoboCop more justice than that movie does to, to Indiana Jones. I agree. But that movie's at least, like, entertaining and how weird it is, and this one, like... No. No, it's just boring. That's my thing, is there's just nothing to chew on with this one. Like, um, the example I used was Dragon Ball Evolution, because they're, most of, a big chunk of the movie I just find boring, but there's scenes at the beginning I was laughing my fucking ass off at. I mean, I think Dragon Ball Evolution is kind of conceptually funny as a remake, because <laughs> it misses the mark so totally and completely that it's like... What the fuck were you thinking? What were you, what were you trying to do even? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like like what what did you what did you expect the reaction to this to be? You have changed everything about the source material. I I said I would rather watch uh Percy Jackson in this movie. I I would be on the fence of Aragon. I do remember Aragon really bored the shit out of me too. So it'd probably be right up there with Aragon. Aragon might be a little shorter. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, there is that. Yeah. Would you like to talk about the cast? Yeah. So we, uh, Joel Kinnaman plays RoboCop. He, he of course, would go on to be Sergeant Rick Flagg in the Suicide Squad movies. Mm-hmm. He's sort of, like, he's, like, a good... I mean, I feel like Rick Flagg and Alex Murphy are, like, kind of similar characters, Rick Flagg is obviously, like, more critical of that, where Alex Murphy is supposed to be, like, you know, the the straight-laced good cop guy, mm -hmm. right? And, I, and, I mean, it's like you said, like, he's trying. I, I, I can't, I can't fault his performance in any way. It's just not an interesting role. No. They haven't, 
they haven't written him to be that interesting. No. Gary Oldman as the scientist we talked about a little. And, you know, I think he does good in that role. Gary Oldman's yeah. a good actor. It could have been a lot worse if a less invested actor was in the part. Like, because the character himself is, like, a little on the nose. But you could also hire someone worse than him. When he when it looks like he feels bad for what he's doing, he does genuinely seem remorseful for it at the very least. And you could have someone who... You could get, you could get a worse actor who just doesn't seem like they give a shit. So it's like... Not only are they com- trying to communicate something dull, but they're communicating it poorly. Abby Cornish goes into a trope that I hate in these movies, and I don't even, again, I don't think it's her fault. Can't tell her how to do the lines better because it's just shitty lines, but it's a I love my, I love family character. You relate to this because it's family, and that's all that she is. We don't give her a personality, we don't give her anything to actually be invested in other than the main character loves her and he also loves child. Yeah, I, that is, that's one, like, clear difference between this and the original RoboCop because, like, in the original RoboCop, Alex Murphy's family was not told about RoboCop at all and also, like, I don't think they're dead, but, like, their house burned down and they moved somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So they're just, they're not really present in the film outside of, like, Murphy's memories. Yeah. And I think, I honestly think that's a lot stronger, right? Like, it's, it's, it's part of the thing that, like, helps Murphy, like, remember who he was before RoboCop, right? Yeah. Where in this movie, they're just sort of, they're just sort of a plot device. And, and they're a plot device that so many movies, especially action movies, are guilty of. And it's like, oh my god. I don't, I don't think this is like the most egregious example of, you love wife, you love child. But it's certainly, like, I, I, I get, <laughs> I get why you feel that way about these characters. I, I, I absolutely... I'm not going to defend them as, like, interesting characters in the story. To me, it's just more of the same, and I feel like, I don't know, sometimes if you want to make an interesting relationship, give the partner a personality and not just establish that that's the main character's partner, so you're supposed to care about it. Or even then, like, sometimes less is more. You know what, uh, this is a weird example to bring up because it's not even a movie, but the fucking video game Pikmin does a better job with the main character caring about his family, and they don't appear on screen once in that game. There's just rec- he wants to get home, and there's recollection of memories and letters, and a script, and, and like, memories being discussed by, like, mem- moments with his kids and whatnot that he wants to get back home to, and that is so much more effective, because they're playing it in a way more realistic and not manipulative way, where this movie is just, like, <laughs> it's the same thing as fucking Skyscraper to me, the fucking Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie, where it's, like, they're given these family members screen time as if screen time alone equals personality. Screen time alone equals this is someone that you should care about. And in reality, no, if you're going to give them screen time, you need to make them interesting. Because if you don't, the only thing people are going off of then is that they're related to the main character. I, I think this movie, I, yeah, I do think this movie's like a really good example of that trope for, in a bad way. <laughs> like, it's... I hate it, but that's, I mean, that's just me. Yeah, no, I get you. We talked about Michael Keaton a little. Did you have anything more to say about him? He did a good job. He was not written very well, but, like, it's on the nose, but it's not, like, he's definitely not the worst written character. I think performance-wise, he's kind of good at playing, like, that douchey type of character, you know? I think he did a good job. Uh, You also got Jackie Earl Haley, famous for playing Rorschach. In, in the Watchmen. I kind of... His character works as, like, a contrast to uh, Gary Oldman's character, but I already sort of yeah. criticized Gary Oldman's character, so... <laughs> I, I feel like, by extension, his character is, like... Like, his character is made weaker by the fact that the, the character he's supposed to be a foil to isn't really that interesting. Like, he's the one who's, like, gung-ho about making Murphy RoboCop. 
making him more robotic, making him more like a robot. I don't know if you if you if you took if you took out Gary Oldman, I think there'd be no reason to leave him in. Uh, yeah, um, I think it is. I think it is also worth mentioning that uh, Murphy's partner in this film is played by Michael Kenneth, who. Uh, was uh wh- was the biology teacher on Community? Yeah, I, I was actually that's what I was waiting to mention. Um, <laughs> I think it'd be fun because we can I can add an, another I can add another two characters at this list. I'd like to do uh, a, a letterbox list of just all the movies that contain an actor from one of my three favorite shows, BoJack, Community, and Breaking Bad, because we got we got one of each for tonight. Uh, and have any other community characters popped up? I think Will Arnett was in one of the movies we watched, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in Jonah Hex. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, we got BoJack. We got in the next movie. We got someone else. So bring up. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make the fucking list. <laughs> I'm gonna fill in that cast. That casting list. Take my some of my favorite shows and put that and acknowledge their worst roles. Yeah, I, I do want to say something like about the kid, um, John Paul Rutten. Rutten? As uh, David Murphy, I can't really, again, can't say anything about the performance, and I always try to go easier on the child actors, you know, it's not, if, if there's a bad child performance, it's not, I never blame the fucking kid for it. In this case, I think it's a direction problem, because there was a scene where he, like, sees his dad for the first time as a robot, and it's like, that could be a really big scene, a really important scene if you play it right, it's actually one that could, like, Really it's supposed to something. be an important scene. Like, they bring yeah. it back later in the film. Yeah, you, it, it's something that you really could... You could you could, like, you could, could like fix one of my critiques. If you handled the scene well, it could put the family in a way better light. It could make it like, oh, well, that was worth it. That was worth having the family around. You either gotta make the kid, I don't know, like, scared as fuck or really into it. Um, and they don't do either. They just make him super casual about it. And it almost feels like they were trying to go one direction or the other, but it's just not put together well. I think he's supposed to be a little afraid in that scene, but it's not communicated well. So that was like one of my biggest problems with the movie was that scene. I thought that scene was handled horribly. I don't blame the kid. I blame the director. Yeah, no, like for, for something they try to bring back later, like he doesn't, he doesn't seem that upset at first, and then it's like, oh, he was, like, so upset by that day, and that's gonna be Murphy's motivation in the back half of the movie, and it's like, but he didn't, he didn't seem that upset. Yeah, do you not know how kids react to those things? Because, like, they won't necessarily go on this huge ta- tangent about what they don't like about the situation, but they'll, like, not want to get close to the person. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not going to... I mean, uh, Mitsu was saying, like, bro, if my if my dad came in and he was RoboCop, I'd be so pumped, right? Like, little kids would love to have RoboCop as and a you dad. Can, and you can go that way. You, if you if you, if you you set it up right, you, you are allowed to go that way. But you gotta actually... But, but they didn't even attempt to do that. I, I feel like... I feel like they fumbled his reaction to... His dad being RoboCop completely. Right. I have basically nothing else to say about this movie. We, we talked about it for a while, yeah. I'm, I'm good. Uh, not the it's worst. Just but like. Boring. Yeah, it's like an adaptation that is trying, but. I, I am. I'm really gonna blame the studio on this one. I think the studio wanted, like, a by the numbers action movie. And they did not do the script justice, nor the the film that it is based on justice. It feels like a modern day remake taking the worst things from modern day filmmaking of the time. Yeah, and I and I definitely feel the same way about Total Recall. Should we get to it? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Total Recall. So, Total Recall twenty twelve is a remake of Total Recall from 1990. Uh, another movie by the same director. This one was directed by Len Wiseman, uh, known for the Underworld movies, supposedly. I actually didn't know what those were, but he made, like, five of them. And the movie follows a very similar premise to the original. Um, we have our main character, Douglas, who 
he's living a life that he's not very fond of. In the original, he's working as basically a construction worker. In the remake, he's building robots, so that's quite a jump in profession. Maybe you want to pick something that's a little bit less interesting, so it connects more with the audience, uh, something more mundane, something that a lot of people don't want to do as their job, you know, just just a thought. But he's doing that job, and he, you know, he's having dreams about a life that could have been, but this movie puts you into, it kind of gaslights the audience into, is that a dream, or is that, like, his past life that he's dreaming about? Because he decides that he's going to go for this program called Recall that will alter your memories and give you a fake memory. They, they give you a fake memory of a life that you never lived and it's just kind of like someone that's supposed to, i guess it's someone that's just supposed to help you mentally like in this movie especially it's established that you know it's not something that actually happened it's still a positive memory it's still something that like you it, it doesn't feel any different from any of your other memories it's indistinguishable so he goes in but immediately something goes wrong and then you find out that he's actually like this agent but his memory was wiped and there's all these people after him, and there's this uh, former lover of his that he's trying to reunite with, but it turns out his current wife is actually working with these other people and trying to get him killed. Uh, but then there's also the question of, wait a second, is that actually what's happening, or has the simulation started? Because he wanted a simulation of going to Mars and a simulation of being a secret agent with this cool action adventure, you know? So that's kind of the nuance of the original and the nuance of this one as well. And the rest of the movie is just following him going on this trip and trying to, you know, figure out if it's something that's actually happening or if it's part of the simulation. Both movies leave that ending ambiguous, make that ending uh, ambu. I can't talk right now. Ambiguous. I can't talk. Why can't I say that word? ambiguous ambiguous oh my god um you're putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable right i'm, I'm drunk i'm sorry ambiguous <laughs> uh <laughs> and uh, and yeah that, i mean that's basically it i'd say the key differences between this one and the original is that the wife that he's married to at the beginning it follows him throughout the entire movie where in the beginning first movie she's just kind of there for a scene trying to kill him uh, and this one also goes for the PG-13 rating, which, again, removes some of the personality, not just in the gore, but also some of the creepier practical effects they can do. Uh, and also, there's no rats with human levels of blood, so that really took me out of the experience. Uh, when they shoot... there One, there are no rats, but two, if they shot a rat, they probably wouldn't bleed, like, as if they were a fucking bison. So that what? really took me out of it. Also, like, they don't go to Mars in this one. They stay on Earth the entire time. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. That's a that's probably better to bring up than the rats. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what my big, you know what the biggest difference between this movie and the original are for me? What the ultimately in both movies, the end ends up to you. Is it a simulation or not? Um, it's ambiguous for a reason. They want you to think about it. In the first movie, I saw the whole thing as this is a simulation. Like it, it just it that's just what it feels like. This is his dream. It's a simulation. That's that's what I'm going with. This this remake. It feels real because the people who come into his dream to try to talk him out of it, like try to wake him up, sound very sinister. <laughs> they sound very much like antagonists. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was actually gonna ask if you'd agree with me on this, but I, it feels like this one is leaning much more in the direction of it's real. Yeah, where the the original, it, it feels very fantasy i think it's a lot easier to believe that the original is a fantasy than this one i think it's a lot easier to pinpoint it as a fantasy but i also think it's still more down the middle like i do think it's I, yeah i feel ambiguous. like it is more ambiguous i feel like the the original is more ambiguous where this one is like like goes all the way up to saying this is real and then doesn't matt if you ever if you're ever in a simulation uh and i have, i'm sent into going to try to save you like because you have to wake him up or he's gonna fucking die I'm going to go in. The first thing I'm going to do is put on a tiny top hat and like have a twirly mustache and say, Ah, oh, it's me, your good friend, Mackle. You can trust me. You need to shoot her. And I'm going to have like, this cape that I'm waving around the whole time. Just so you know that you can trust me, okay? Who is this Mackle? My <laughs> name is Guy Incognito. <laughs> that was my favorite scene in the movie just because of how like much of a fucking contrast it was from the original. What it wasn't his friend in the original, it was just some fucking guy. 
who they sent him to try to talk him out of it. And this one, it's his buddy from the beginning of the movie. But he's also, he just sounds so fucking sketchy the entire time. Like, it was like, were they trying to make it like that? Because it really felt like they were trying to make this guy seem like a fucking phony in that scene. But maybe it was just bad communication. Maybe it was just bad directing with the actors. Yeah, I... That, that, that is one of the things that makes me lean more like, oh, this one, like, this one is definitely more real. This one is definitely less of a fantasy. Uh, there's other stuff, though, like, it's such like a, I, I like, you know, it's like we were saying with RoboCop, it's very boring. It's a very by-the-numbers action movie. Yeah. And it, especially, like, for the time it was released in. And that's just... Like, such a, such a disappointment. But there's even, like, little things they do that make this one seem more like it's real, less like it's a fantasy, right? Like, for one thing, I, I pointed this out while we were watching it. The, like, the woman with three tits shows up before he even goes into recall. Yeah. And, and in the original movie, that's because M Mars was, like, populated by mutants. Right. She was a mutant. It made sense. In this one, it's just like, oh, wow, there's a woman with three tits. Look at that. Well, honestly, the town that he wakes up in, the, the town he starts off in in this movie looks more like the town from the climax of the first movie. I, I gotta be honest, too. There's a lot of things about it that's like, again, I already mentioned he has a more interesting career in this one. And I'm not going to act like that wouldn't get tiring after a while. But it's also not re it's not it's also not relatable. I think him being a construction worker was supposed to be very relatable to the audience. It's like a job that no one really, you know, it, it's a job I, I, that... I almost, like, I, I kind of get why they went that way in this one, because, like, he is still explicitly, like, working for the bad guy in this one. He's, like, building, like, the police robots mm -hmm. that are going to be, like, the enemies for most of the movie. I just feel like it goes against a different, a more important point, though. Yeah. Which is, why Why does a person want to go into Total Recall, you know? Yeah. And it's because they have a life that doesn't feel like it's much them. And here's, a mo like, a detail that I don't know if, like, to you or people listening to this will see it as important, but I actually do think it's important. And I actually think it should, brings out a character flaw in the original movie, but a character flaw that's interesting, a part of the character that's interesting. I think it was a mistake making the his wife and his fantasy wife look very similar. Because I think I agree. That, I, I, uh, there were honestly points in the film where I couldn't tell them apart. Because I think the original one shows that there's a shallow side to our main character where, you know, he has this wife, it's a blonde wife, and he keeps fantasizing about a different wife. And the only thing he's really fantasizing yeah. about is the appearance. You know, he's not fantasizing about much else. I mean, okay, there's a couple of personality no. descriptions. He is, like, sleazy as one. He, there, there's definitely something to the personality, too. But it's like... He doesn't really love his wife, is what you're getting at. He doesn't hate his yeah, wife. Yeah, no, I, I think I think it's a very strong moment in the first one where they ask him like what they what what he wants the girl to look like, and like they offer him a blonde, and he says brunette. Yeah, and it's like, well, yeah, that's not his wife. He he doesn't care about his wife. Yeah, and it's not you know I think that it's like maybe the people making this remake thought that was too unlikable of a trait, but it's a very human trait. And like, okay, if you want to make it more likable, fair enough. It's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger is the greatest guy in the original movie, but he is a he is a person. You know, he's a human being. Where in this movie, it's just your perfect action hero. I, I don't. It doesn't yeah. feel like they go that direction with him at all. I, he doesn't seem unsatisfied with his wife, really. Mostly it's his job he seems upset about. Yeah. And another thing, I think it's so important in the original that he goes to Mars, right? Yeah. Because he went to Recall to get memories of a vacation. He doesn't go on vacation in this movie. He stays in the same city he's always in. Which is another thing that's hinting at it being real, honestly. Yeah. Because he doesn't even go to the destination that he was set to in the fantasy. And yeah, he doesn't go to Mars. And I almost forgot. You're right. I almost forgot about that making it to the end of the movie. Because the fucking. Yeah, it just. I don't know. The fucking climaxes of these movies are so different and so similar at the same time. It's like. But it's just all the wrong details in the remake. They went to this stupid fucking fake out with his wife at the end. Yeah, that's one scene where I was like. Hold on. This is the new girl, right? This isn't his old wife. 
Because I'm like a little bit face blind, so I'm like, <laughs> this is this is the new girl, right? That's not his wife. Because <laughs> there was like half a second there where I thought he was waking back up at recall. Like the dream was over and he was back at recall. And I'm like, oh, they're just going to tell us in this one, huh? Look, I can always tell Jessica Beale away, Jessica Beale away from other uh, brunettes. You know, she was going to be the governor of California. She was robbed because she didn't like avocado, but like you know, <laughs> she she had that uh, that scent B list. <laughs> um, she didn't win governor, and I was like, this is unbelievable. That's the only thing I've seen Jessica Biel in that I like her in, like, is her playing herself in BoJack. But I think she's really fucking funny in BoJack. Uh, but yeah, that's the only thing. I've looked at her cast, at, like, her other roles, and it's like, yeah, it's just BoJack. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm looking now. I gotta agree. Um, but I haven't seen everything she's in. I've heard Sinner, The Sinner's pretty good. I don't know anything about that show. She also fucking did the same show that Elizabeth Olsen did within a one-year radius where they both made a show about the same fucking, like, murderer. That was interesting. (laughs) Huh. Like, Candy Montgomery, I think, was her name. They both did a fucking show about her. Like, one was 2022, one was 2023. (laughs) I don't know which one was a bigger hit. I don't know if either of them were a hit, but they both had the same idea at the same time. I certainly haven't heard of either film. Uh, They're both shows. They're miniseries. Or, uh, yeah, either show. I haven't heard of either show, I should say. I haven't watched either show. I just heard about it because they're both like, it's just one of those weird instances like, yeah, we're, we're, we're both making the show about the same murderer. The action in this movie is a lot less good than the original in pretty Hell much yeah. the same way it is for RoboCop. Like Verhoeven loves excessive violence. He get, he shoots some really beautiful, really good looking action scenes. Yes. And this film, much like RoboCop, it is so bland, so by the numbers. It is it is the same action sequences you have seen in fucking every action movie from this era. Especially PG-13 action movies. I even think some of it's like kind of like goes beyond bland. I think some of it's bad. Like the car chase scene um in the middle of the movie. I think that like whenever it like cut to an out like the background looked real, but everything else looked super fucking fake. Like the cars didn't even look real. It looked like a fucking video game. I will I will give it some credit. Like, a lot of these sets are, like, real physical sets. Yes. Sets right? they really They really only use the CG for, like, big stuff. So, like, sets were, sets were something I can give this movie a lot of credit for. Honestly, more credit than RoboCop. I think the sets are better in this movie. Yeah, I actually loved the set that they filmed the beginning of the movie on. I thought it looked, it was like, you know, it's going for a Blade Runner aesthetic. But I, I think it did it really well, actually. Uh, I, I would have been happy seeing that set used for a better movie because I think it was a worthwhile set. The people who designed that did a good job with it. It, it did have that Blade Runner feel into it, but it still did a few things on its own. Like, it felt, it managed to feel so cluttered, but still, like, like there was a lot going on. And then, like, there's, like, a river going through it, like... Um, yeah, there were some things that helped it stand out. I actually liked the set design a lot for that one scene. And, and later in the movie, it's fine, too. But that was, like, to me, like, the one, like, really standout set where it's like, oh, fuck, you guys did a fucking great job on this one. This looks great. And you get, like, a chase scene with his ex-wife trying to kill him. And I, and I don't, like, think that was a change that really benefited the movie, like, for, like, the message or, like, the story that much. Um, but I do think it led to a couple of fun scenes. Like, I like the scene where she's chasing him throughout the town, even though I do feel like maybe that goes against the point a little bit of it yeah. just being this one, like, it's kind of supposed to be this just, like, quick exchange. Um, and also, it's like, I feel like they're kind of trying to keep this under wraps a bit, that this is a thing going on. Like, they want him, the reason they want to capture him is because they don't want certain information getting out. Um, and... But this is just a, uh, a chase scene that they're, like, blatantly having in town, like, breaking through people's ceilings. Yeah, I... I Here's the thing. You don't have uh, Michael Ironside's character in this movie. They don't have any, like, stand-in for Michael Ironside, the, the henchman who's trying to, like, track him down and kill him the whole movie. And so she really starts to fill that role at some point. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that was, like, a bit of a girl power thing they wanted to do. I don't know. Um, she's not that, you know, it's like, 
You ever, I bet you ever... better, better than RoboCop replacing uh, Nancy Allen with a, a man. Yeah. The, the, the character's last name is even still Lewis. He's Jack Lewis instead of Ann Lewis now. You ever watch something and you're getting enjoyment out of it and you're like, am I getting enjoyment out of this because it's like actually funny or am I getting enjoyment out of this because I'm a fucking idiot? Because I was genuinely laughing every single time. And I felt like a fucking idiot every time <laughs> where like she's chasing throughout the whole movie. So they keep making like marriage jokes about that. Like saying like, she says you're married as they're doing the car chase. It's like, we're definitely, I consider us separated at this point. <laughs> Just like <laughs> little lines like that throughout the movie as these two are ch- trying to hunt each other down. There, there was never a single one that I thought was as good as consider that a divorce. <laughs> you're right. You're right. But yeah, so they, they they took that one line from the first one and said, let's do 87 of them. <laughs> there are They recycle a lot of lines from the first film into this one. And like, every single time it was like, oh, wow, you did the line from the first movie. <laughs> what was that one line that they did? They didn't even redo it. They just did a spin on it in the RoboCop remake. You even booed it. Like, I wouldn't buy oh. that. <laughs> yeah, no, in, in the original, there's, like, the crazy car salesman who's like, I'd buy that for a dollar. And that's become, like, one of, like, the famous lines from RoboCop. So then in the RoboCop remake, like, uh, Murphy does, like, really bad. Like, he does worse than the robot at his training. And then the, the robot guy is just like, I wouldn't buy that for a dollar. And it's like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> it wasn't even funny. <laughs> oh, it's one of those lines that became funny, like when you watch your friend watch and get annoyed by it, you know? It, literally, that line is on par with the guy from Garfield going, I hate lasagna. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, it's fucking, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's so, it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Do we want to talk about casting for Total Recall? Let's talk about the cast for this movie. We, we've discussed Colin Farrell a little bit. He is an actor I like a lot. He is also an actor I have seen in some, like, not very good stuff, but... Yeah. He, he was in one of my favorite movies last year, man. She's been a year and uh, he's a good actor. No, he's really good in that. He's really good in the... Uh... The Lobster and In Bruges. Yeah, yeah The Lobster is a great movie. Uh, he was in Killing of a Sacred Deer. I, I didn't like that one as much as The Lobster, but it was fine. Um, have you seen In Bruges? No, I got to. I have to. It's the same. I know it's the same director as like Three Billboards and Banshees, and I love both of those movies dearly. <laughs> well, it's is it the same director? Holy shit, it is the same director. But it's it stars Colin Farrell and uh, Brendan Gleeson. Who yep. were the leads in Banshees of Inner Sharon. And it is so tonally distant from that movie. Like, <laughs> these two films are nothing alike. <laughs> yeah, even, honest to God, even Banshees and Three Billboards are very different. The, the, this director has a good variety. Oh, yeah. They both, they both had a sense I, of humor. That's what I, I didn't say. I didn't know he directed all three of that. Look at that. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> good fucking director. Oh, my God. Yeah, Three Billboards and Banshees are both like fucking like. S tier movies. I love both of them a lot. Like they're both so, so so many good character driven movies. Like everything else is done well too, but the fucking characters in his movies are S tier. But uh, uh, Kate Beckinsale, kind of like a fun idea for a character of his like ex wife that's hunting him down the whole movie, but still not a very fun performance for that character. No, no, I I definitely preferred Sharon Stone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jessica Biel. Love Jim Bojack, but kind of boring in this. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't that into her in this. I I think I think she is like maybe this is a result of the movie being more boring. But I found her a lot less boring than uh, a lot more boring than her uh, counterpart in the original Total Recall. I suppose I could say that about just about every character in this, but like, yeah, her it really stood out that like. I don't care about this character in this movie, and I do care about her in total in the original Total Recall. So, like, like in the original, she one stood out from his wife. That was important. I feel we mentioned that before. Stood out from the wife, 
So it's like showing that he's like what he's seeking out a little bit more. But also like, um, yeah, like the scene, I, I think a great example of that is the scene where they, there's a scene where both of these characters, these two same versions of the character find out that he is married. And in the original, it's kind of like a big deal, you know? In this one, it's kind of used for a joke, <laughs> and then it's over, you know? And I don't think the one from the original is perfect. I feel like they could have, like... But I do think it feeds into that fantasy that, you know, we mentioned this when we were watching it, that, like, Schwarzenegger's heaven. I think that she feeds into that side of the movie a lot more. Where this movie, it's just some other girl, you know? Like, I don't know. They, they, she, she doesn't really have much going for her in this. Got uh, the British Bill Nye in this... Who's, like, a good actor, but, like, he's, he's Matthias. He's, like, the, the secret underground resistance guy that they gotta go find. And that character is so much more interesting in the original. Because, like, in the original, he's a mutant, first off. They've completely cut the mutants from this movie. And, like, the mutants have, like, these wild powers in the original, so he's, like... He's an interesting, like, wise and sage character, because he's not even, like, the wise and sage character. It's his, like, deformed, you know, basket case Siamese twin. Where in this movie, he's just some fucking dude. Hey, hey, look, the original had mutants, this one doesn't. The original had Hank, this one just says fucking Walter. <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Hank was in the original, Walter's in this one, goddamn. <laughs> I guess in the end, Hank really did win. Um, no, but like Walter, <laughs> Brian Cranston's in this. Uh, I, this was, because this was like right around the time Breaking Bad ended, right? Um, season well, 2012 would have. Season 5 was ongoing. Yeah. Because part 1 was 2012 and part 2 is 2020, 2013. Yeah, this was like a time where. Brian Cranston just got a lot of weird, like, kind of minor roles. Like, enough for him to be, like, in the top build, but, like, he, he didn't do a lot in the movies. Uh, we watched one of them previously, John Carter. He's yeah. in that one very briefly. Oh, yeah, fucking Brian uh, Cranston's also, a like the, actor. Like, the 2014 Godzilla movie... But, like, as as Breaking Bad was ending, Brian Cranston was just... Just had minor roles in a whole bunch of random-ass movies just like this one. He was in The Disaster Artist as Brian Cranston. Young Brian Cranston still on Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> I think in the one scene where he reveals to Douglas who he was in his past life, I think he does a pretty decent job in that scene. I think he has, like, the same cockiness that the original character does. I think he still has a decent amount of personality. I think he's trying his ass off. I like Brian Granston in that scene. The rest of the movie, he either... Either the movie isn't utilizing him, or he's just forgettable. That's, like, the only scene with him where I was like, oh, this this is actually kind of close to the original. Uh, but, I mean, even then, in, like, the original, he has that footage of him with Schwarzenegger, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, uh, the like that that like it's so much more shocking in that one because you know it's not fake. Like you know he's not just bullshitting you. It's like, oh, you don't believe me? Here's the proof. Yeah, and it's like, and, and that's oh why fuck. I'm, and that's why Cranston's the only thing I'm complimenting about that scene because I agree with you 100. percent I just think Brian, like, like, like you know, like uh, Michael Keaton in the last one. I think he, you know, a better script would have been nice, but I think he could do the role. Yeah, I don't even know if Colin Farrell, like, even if, like, with a better script, I don't even know if Colin Farrell would be the right choice. Like, you're, you're recasting Arnold Schwarzenegger and you go for Colin Farrell, that's a weird choice. I, but that's, that's part of, like, making this a much more watered-down 2010s action movie. Yeah. Versus, like, the, the 90s not-so-Schwarzenegger movie. I don't know, this is this is maybe getting off the topic of, of cast a little too much, but it's it's just like a broad feeling I have about the whole movie. It's just, the original's so much more fun, right? It's so much more oh, fun yeah. to see, like, the nutso, wild Schwarzenegger action movie, 
And it fits the tone, it fits the story a little better, because it, it feels more like a fantasy. Well, I'll say, I'll say this, like, I, I made a reference to the Sigmund Corp games at the beginning of this, which is something that, a game series that has a similar concept to Total Recall, but, like, in, when we watched the first one together, you were like, this is like Sigmund Corp if it was a Arts, Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie, you know? What would you say about this one? It's like a Colin Farrell action movie. Like, no, it just, it doesn't have, the first one has so much working for it before it even begins. Yeah, no, it has a good director and an interesting star. Yeah. Which this... is more than, like, okay, I like Colin Farrell, but he, he was not cut out for this role. No. And they give him nothing interesting to do. He's perfect for a movie like Banshees, where it's like a weird character study movie. This is like, supposed to be a fun action movie and like Colin Farrell's not even like in the like the first hundred people I would think about the cast for this yeah and like Schwarzenegger they just let run wild they just let him be Schwarzenegger you know Bo Keem Woodbine the best friend um who's been in stuff I've seen him in other movies movies that I enjoyed yeah, I kind of interpret him as a bad guy in this movie, even though I think it's supposed to be fucking ambiguous. I'm sorry, did you say bad guy? Yeah. Okay, for half a second there, I'm, I thought you said black guy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, he sure was a black guy. What do you uh, mean it's ambiguous? <laughs> of course he was a black guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Matt. <laughs> I don't know, I, th I think the ending leaves it up to our interpretation if we want to see this character as black or not. <laughs> I don't know, anyone else worth talking about? Uh, Fucking Harold from Harold and Kumar. <laughs> who's in, like, one scene. Yeah, no. Apparently, apparently Ethan Hawke had scenes that were cut from this movie. Huh. Like, his, his character got cut entirely. Uh, Len, Len, Len Wiseman is, uh, gonna direct, uh, the director of this movie is gonna direct the John Wick spinoff, Ballerina, in 2024. Keanu Reeves is gonna oh, cameo from, on it. Oh, from, from, the, from the director of, of Total Recall? Yeah. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> uh, Lan oh, it's gonna be one of Lance Reddick's last performances, so I guess that's notable. L Len, Lens Wiseman. Uh, most known for his uncredited role as property assistant for Men in Black. He also directed an episode of Hawaii Five O. He directed Live Free or Die Hard, which is one of the bad ones that I haven't actually seen. Live Free or so Die So maybe it's trying. not that bad. Underworld, I have heard, like, mixed things on. As a 82% fucking Live Free or Die Hard. Are you sure that's one of the bad ones? Live Free or Die Hard. 82% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Yeah. Weird. That's that's one of those films from, like, the... Or that one of the action films from the 2010s that was supposed to be R-rated, and then they cut it to be PG-13. Underworld, his first Underworld movie, has a 31%, so how the fuck are there five of them? Alright, maybe Evolution was better. Uh, no... I guess Rotten Tomatoes didn't even bother with... 17%, there we go. I've heard people defend the Underworld movies, though. I have never heard anyone defend Live Free, Die Hard. <laughs> the third one got a 29%. Underworld might be one worth drunk ranking. Although five... Five is not a lot. I usually try to drunk rank series that have at least six films. Also, the director's married to the ex-wife in this movie. At least he was until 2019. So he he and Ke Kate Beckinsale are no longer together. No longer together. Consider that a divorce. Ah Do you have anything else to say about Total Recall? Because it's just it's boring. I don't know. I think I feel like we've been over all of it. In the middle of the movie. I don't know if you remember this. In the middle of the movie, I just started singing a song about how boring it was. Uh, you you were turned down pretty low. I couldn't hear you very much, but you missed my nostalgia critic joke. Just, 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 just kind of boring. Because they said we recall it so you don't have to. He reviewed the original Total Recall. Why? When? I, he, he, I, he was doing like a Schwarzenegger month, I think. He did like a Schwarzenegger month and reviewed that. It's a good movie, Doug. Come on. And nowadays, Doug reviews it good is. movies. Back in the day, he didn't review good movies. 
I think he still reviewed some good stuff back then. Yeah, he just didn't have. I mean, especially outlook back then. He did, the, he did Total Recall and Commando, and I think those are, like, two of Schwarzenegger's best movies. Mm-hmm. Well, I never saw his Total Recall episode, so maybe, maybe it's worth check. Did he do that one with Phalus? I don't think so. Was that one across every? He may have done it with Sci-Fi Guy. I don't remember. I never watched it, but I, I felt like that one was a rip row across. Because that was one of his last reviews, I think. I don't, before he ended it, but like, which was a six-month end, and it shouldn't even, shouldn't even fucking count at this point. Has he been back longer than than he was before he quit? I'm sure he has. It's been like, yeah, it's been a decade. I think before it was five years, and now it's been ten years. Huh. Here's here's the last thing I have to say about Total Recall. Uh, this film caused, like, a minor schism with my friend and I, because I said something about how good Total Recall was, and he's like, oh, that film sucked, and I'm like... Whoa, hold on, Total Recall's fucking great, and we, we went back and forth a minute, and then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you talking about the Schwarzenegger movie, or are you talking about the new one from, like, a few years ago? And he was talking about the remake, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> he was right, this film does suck. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. Okay, um... I'm gonna give it, I, 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 I know which one I'm picking, and I'm gonna give it over the most petty fucking thing imaginable, but they're so close that I don't care. I, to me, one of these films is a very bland remake that takes away a lot of what made the original work, and one of these is a bland remake that was really trying to be something. You you can feel like someone writing RoboCop cared about RoboCop. It doesn't feel like anyone who was working on Total Recall cared about Total Recall. So, I, I, I just think there's more good ideas in RoboCop. I just think there's more... There's more that works in RoboCop. Ultimately, it is a boring movie. And I could say exactly the same thing about Total Recall. But Total Recall, there's like so much less I think works about it. Mm -hmm. So, my vote is for RoboCop. I think one is a bland movie, and I think one is a bland movie that put a bunch of lens flares on the screen for no reason throughout the entirety <laughs> of the movie. So my vote goes for RoboCop too. <laughs> uh, we didn't even talk about the lens flares. There's so many fucking <laughs> lens flares in this movie. God, there's so many lens flares. Uh, I, I do agree with you, though. I think RoboCop does have better ideas, and I do think it. I, I agree that like it's probably a, a closer to a passion project than Total Recall is, but uh, but the lens flares. I the second that shit started happening, I was feeling like Total Recall is probably gonna be worse than that one. Not only that it was the lens flares, the opening scene had some cool shots in it, but it was ruined by a shitty strobe light effect that didn't even have a fucking warning at the beginning of the movie for anyone who might have a bad reaction to that. Something that you're kind of supposed to put in movies as a heads up. Uh, I don't know, is that just me? Should have they had a should have they had a warning about that? I think I well here's the thing, like Hulu had their like hey, this might not be appropriate for all audiences thing. So I feel like Hulu should have also been like yeah. Hey, uh this this uh, film has, like, a strobing light effect that might uh, not be okay for sensitive ver viewers, for light-sensitive viewers. Because it's not just, like, flashing lights. It's literally the strobe effect. Yeah. It's literally they had strobe lights there. Um, yeah, no, that was a fucking... Aw that, that was, like, a, a open end that would have at least visually been nice if they didn't fucking ruin it with the lens flares and the light end. Like, this is a movie that, like had good ideas for visuals and got in its own way so frequently. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the fucking Star Wars, like, re-releases. Like, let's put a fucking CG creature in the uh, in the way of the screen. It's like, like, it's working against itself so much. They had something and they ruined it. The audience vote is not even close. It is RoboCop by a wide margin. It is 88% RoboCop to 13% Total Recall. You know what? For those people that vote for uh, Total Recall, you're not, like, super off. I'll say that much, but I, I do disagree. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I think these two are, like, close, but I also feel like most people are going to vote RoboCop over Total Recall. Yeah, probably. Because, I mean, RoboCop, it's like, it, I, I got less angry at it. Oh, you know what thing? 
no fucking scene in Total Recall I didn't talk about that I should mention really quickly. Uh, sure. Um, I'll make it quick. The scene, they even referenced the original by having that one lady show up at the, like, basically through TSA. It lo- they have a woman who looks very similar to the woman in the first movie, has a really iconic scene of her face being disfigured to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's a very memorable scene. It's a very cool practical effect they pulled off. And in this movie, they have a woman there that looks like him as a reference, but the way they actually do the face reveal is so fucking lame. That was one of the lamest changes I've ever seen. So, to the point where it's like, why did you even reference the first movie? Why would you bring any attention to yourself here? What you made was clearly a lot less cool than the original. Like, it was so blatant. Why would you fucking bring attention to yourself? That was such a bad call. That was such a shitty idea. That was my le- that was that was my least favorite part of the movie. That was like the one part that I actually like was actively yelling <laughs> as we were watching it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they they a a significant like you reference an iconic scene from the original and then make the least iconic thing you could make. So fucking lame. Robocop wins. Woo! So this next one this is going to be a really fun one. Okay. I'm warning you now, we're doing a fun one next, because the Halloween episode is going to hurt, <laughs> and November's not looking much better. Hey, I'm excited so, for November. We're we're gonna we're going to do an easy one here. We're going to do a fun one. These are like, I, I think probably both of these will end up like in the top ten most entertaining for the series. Okay. Uh, it's, it's two films, uh, released around the same time, very small budgets, and both about, both very strange tales of talking animals. I am, of course, referring to David Dakota's A Talking Cat (laughs) versus Love on a Leash. Oh, shit. (laughs) Dude, dude, dude. Love on a Leash has great ratings on IMDb. <laughs> uh, I think I gave it a 10. <laughs> I literally got fucking roped the movie. Oh god, I literally, I went to the, the, the letterboxed page. I have it at five stars. Everyone I follow has it at five stars. <laughs> it's literally, it literally got fucking Ralph Seppi banned from IMDb. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is, it is the film that got Ralph the Movie Maker banned from IMDb because he told everyone to rate it 10 out of 10. Love on a leash. I think this is the very most, yes, it is the most divisive movie on Letterboxd. It has the most five-star and half-star ratings of any movie. And it's probably people, all for people who love the movie the same amount. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm looking forward to this one. Honestly, I think, like, I nor- I normally don't know what these are going to be before they happen. I think I actually do know what the November lineup is. And I- I'm excited for half of that one. I'll say that much. Did, did you have anything else to say before we, we finished up? Uh, no, uh, this one was a fun discussion, but watching them was a real drag. Yeah, I mean... But, re- but what, being able to watch Total Recall as an excuse was fun. Oh, yeah. And, and... I, I think, yeah, I think it's, like, a good discussion because it's, like, why do these films fail when the thing they're based on succeeds? That always, I think, is an interesting conversation to have. Yeah. This is a longer one, which w- w- maybe makes up for how last time we <laughs> we got through Space Jam and uh, back in action in, like, 50 minutes. It's because they were too good. It's because we didn't have enough to complain about. <laughs> Anyways, until next time... I'm Matt Presents. Uh, See you in the next one. Peace.